can we return to uh, like what what is a person? What is a person? Yeah, it's a yeah. tricky word and has a uh, the concept of personhood has a very murky conceptual history. Uh, and well, I mean, first, I mean, you, you, we have to acknowledge that there are merely legal or fictional persons, mm -hmm. entities recognized as persons, quote unquote, for the sake of like legal convenience or treatment and things exotic, as exotic as like boats and rivers. Uh, oh, yeah. Have been, yeah. Have been afforded. The Amazon. Yeah. I think maybe. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I know there's at least a couple rivers in China <laughs> wow. afforded the legal status of personhood. Now, obviously, when you ask what is a person, uh, you, you're you're really asking what is a real person. I want to know what a real person is, not mm -hmm. not like a not a this persona ficta type thing. Yeah. Um, and here's what I think a real person is: it's anything that meets sufficient conditions of real personhood. Okay, mm -hmm. what are those? Well, I think uh, anything that is morally responsible, anything that has free will, uh, and anything that has a rational first-person perspective, mm -hmm. uh, anything that has those conditions meets those conditions. That's enough to be to be considered a person. To be to be uh, that's su that's sufficient for personhood. Yeah. Um, do so. This might set things up weirdly, but do you is consciousness part of that? There are different kinds of consciousness. Mm -hmm. There are normal conscious states, what we could just describe as mental states. Mm -hmm. And I think animals have conscious mental states. Mm -hmm. So consciousness just as such, excuse me, I don't think is is sufficient for personhood. Now, phenomenal consciousness, yeah, that's different. Phenomenal consciousness is not just having a conscious state. I think most philosophers are agreed that phenomenally conscious states, you have to have sort of a rational first person perspective that sort of turns inward and can assess its own conscious states. Yeah. Like a, so, like a self-consciousness. Yeah, like it has a reflective aspect to it. Yeah, that's right. So, so there's this uh, meta conscious state or self-conscious state that I think is the step up from just mere consciousness. That's that gets into personhood territory. So is that a is that a sufficient condition? Is that or is that a necessary condition? I guess of, of personhood. Uh, I don't know. Again, it gets complicated because yeah. you know you don't want to say like a comatose right is self conscious. There's a sense in which they're self conscious in the sense that they have like a nature mm -hmm. uh, that if functioning properly and all that stuff, they would be self conscious or or fetuses. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's complicated ordinarily. So I don't know if I want to say necessary, but definitely sufficient. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. That's great. Okay. Yeah. This is the, the personhood stuff is so tricky, especially because then you bring up those kind of conversations and we are Christians. We take, you know, the, the Imago Dei pretty seriously. And so we don't want to have any kind of theory that's going to destroy, uh, exclude certain people from the image of God. If they're, actually image of God. So I, I feel you there and it's, it's always tricky reading through personhood stuff and trying to pin down a theory.